Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this video session, we're going to take a look at vector outlines. The anatomy and properties of vector lines and outlines in Corel Draw. Here I have the object properties doc, and I also have that open here in my Corel Draw workspace where I have my docker customized to the left hand side. And here we can see all of the different properties and attributes and adjustments we can make to lines and outlines in Corel Draw, and there are many of them. And we want to be aware of them because we can use them effectively in our graphic design workflow and in our production artwork flow. You see, you have outline width, color, style, meter limit, corner style, cap style, outline position, arrowheads, styles, a nib that's interactive, and more. Let's scroll down and we'll start with the basics so we understand what we're working with. Let's take a look at outline components. The outlines are actually outlines applied to the vector wireframe of your line or graphic object or shape. They have two components. They have a width and they also have an outline end cap. Your end cap can be in a square, round, or extended square mode. And here we can see square and that's butted right up against the wireframe. When that's rounded, we can see that the outline goes around of the vector wireframe. Now this is just a simple wireframe line. Now lines don't operate like this. I set this up for demonstrative purposes. Here is a line and you can see the outline is applied to that. Now this is just, I've made the shapes to simulate what's really going on. This is not how the outlines operate. Here I can see I have a black line with a 10 point outline. I can see that also up here in my object properties docker and also in my properties bar. And you can convert your outlines to curves and we'll get into that later. So that's the rounded end cap. Now the extended square end cap comes out also like the rounded but it's squared. Now these are all based on the dimensions of the width of the outline. If I change this to say 15 and hit enter, you can see that my extended square end cap also went out. It went out proportionally with the extension or scale of the width of my outline on this line. I'll hit control Z and go back. So here we can see how the outlines work. And this is the basic anatomy and the components that you'll be working with. Now later we'll get into the states of lines and outlines and those are your curves and things like that. But for now we're just going to look at the outlines. You also have outline position. Now this is a rectangle object and the outline is set to outside. Here it's set to centered. Here it's set to inside. Now I can change that by coming over to the properties docker and just clicking on that and now it's to the outside set with beveled corners and we'll get to corners in a minute. I'll change that to rounded. And you can see how I can make these changes in the object properties docker to my outlines by selecting them or changing them in my object properties docker. It's the same with a simple line. This is set to an end cap of extended square. I could change that to 
just a left click round cap and you'll see the change or I could go to square so I'm going back and forth between my vector outlines and my object properties docker to apply those options or those states to my outlines with the object properties docker and we can see how these work here this would be the wireframe and the outline is going to the outside this would be the wireframe and the outline is going centered this would be the wireframe and the outline is going to the inside we'll scroll down let's take a look at the meter limit and also you need to note that the meter adjustment only works on square caps now by default it's set to 45 degrees these are both set to 0 0.1 degrees but the default is 45 and you'll see what happens here I'll set this to 45 and hit enter now I get like that camp feared or beveled end on the point of my polygon starburst here and if I want those points to extend all the way out as we can see here I have to change my meter limit so I have to select the object go over to my meter limit I'll just hit one and then press enter and that'll change that now I'll get a nice point on the end of my polygon star you want to be aware of that especially when you have objects or vector curves that have points on them and you want to keep those points with both your shape and your outline so when you see that realize that the default is 45 and that can put a cap on your points that kind of gives you that beveled look so that's your meter limit and you'll know when you want to use that based on what you're working with as far as your vector shapes are concerned I'm going to scroll out here we'll come up here and we'll take a look at the different outline corners we have metered round and beveled now here we can see the metered that's square to a point on the end then we have a round corners then we have a beveled corners once again we can adjust that simply by selecting our vector object or shape going to the object properties docker here we can see that we have our different states now this is metered that'll change that to round and this will change the outline corners to beveled and you can see that if I click off then once again we can see wireframe square wireframe outline rounded now our graphics I've just set up for demonstrative purposes so that you could see how the outlines are applied to the vector wireframes here we have the beveled let's take a look at outline relation and fill properties here is a rectangle and my rectangle has been set to in front of film that's by default and this is behind fill if I come over to the object properties docker and enable behind fill you'll see that my outline will now be moved behind my fill and by default it's set to the front but I can change that in the object properties docker and go behind the fill another thing we want to be aware of with our outlines is scaling properties if an object is set to scale with outline which this one is but this one is not there will be a dramatic difference when you scale or enlarge the object if I left click and select this come to my scale and left click hold down and enlarge that you'll see that my outline will also scale proportionally with the dimensions of my object I'll hit control Z to go back however if I do not have that enabled left click and enlarge that you'll see that the outline size stays the same or eight points so you want to be aware of scaling especially if you're developing graphics that you might want to output at different sizes you want to have your outlines to be scalable 
Now we're going to take a look at the nib, which can be adjusted interactively through the object properties bar. And here's the interactive nib right here. If I select this line, which also has an arrowhead on it, you'll see that the nib has changed. I have a rounded corner, so this has a round nib. If I make an adjustment to that, it will make an adjustment to my line with the arrowhead. If I go to a metered corner, the nib will change to a square. I can left click, hold down, change the width of the nib and the angle of it, and you can see that effect on my line. So you can do many things with your nib in the graphic design process and then do convert outline to object and make some really nice design elements using those techniques. Here I have the same sort of setup with a line style applied to the outline in Corel Draw and the nib has been adjusted. So these are the fundamentals and properties of vector lines and outlines in Corel Draw. You want to take some time to practice and work with these and get familiar with them. It's not difficult and you'll find them very useful in your graphic design workflow process. We'll wrap here and we'll continue in our next video session.